Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadow come? Why should my heart feel lonely? And long for heaven and home. When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His the sorrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. Lord, I sing because
showed fear. What could we imagine that this man may have crossed his mind? Or what do you suppose the senior disciple of the twelve, Andrew, Peter's brother, must have felt he the senior of the group because he was considered as the first friend that Jesus had. And in fact, he witnessed the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. And now, in a questionable moment, he finds himself asking Jesus, Lord, is it I? Or oh, what a question for anyone to have to ask themselves of Lord, is it I? What, what a question for you and I to have to ask the Lord, Lord, is it I? Can I, can I be the problem to the situation? Can't you just imagine the playback of the mind of Bartholomew? It was he from the offset of being introduced to Jesus by Philip, namely called the Greek because of his fluency of speaking Greek. And Bartholomew, with a questionable mindset of Christ. And now Christ is suggesting such a betrayal to us. He had to hit the replay button. Within his own mind, it says, I recorded in John 1, verse number 46, I asked myself at one time, can anything good come out of Nazareth? What could he have thought about hearing Jesus say that one of you will betray me? And now here, I sit amongst my traveling brothers, and I'm asking the one whom I followed up until this present hour, Lord, is it I? Can't you just visualize the pressure of Jesus? Good friend. And the scripture says that he was a beloved friend of Jesus. Can't you imagine how John had to feel? And in the Sunday school and Bible studies regulars or just student of the word knows that John was loved by Jesus. And his love for Jesus was shown explicitly at the end when Jesus was on the cross. Or when Jesus was going to the cross, John's love showed explicitly. Because it was Jesus and John and Mary that were traveling to the cross. And Jesus was shown explicitly at the end. His work and his care showed more after the fact rather than during the travel. Because when Christ was bearing his cross, it was this same John that Jesus loved. This John stayed in front of the cross. This John stayed in front of the cross. Making the persecution a little more easier to handle by Jesus' mother Mary. Does Jesus with such care for both his mother and John? Look at what Jesus did. He turned over his earthly ownership of son over to John. But, but yet John had to sit at the table with a question that rang around the table of Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? And I don't know about you this morning, but if ever anything I don't want to happen to me is to be placed within a thought or will I betray the Lord? I, I don't want that to be a thought that, on, on, that falls on my mind. Will I turn my back on the Lord? Will I betray? Will I turn my back? Will I let the Lord down? Will, I, will I, all of my servants serve to the Lord? Will I be put to the test because I have the back of my mind hoovering over me a betrayal against the Lord? And I'm saying this this morning. Lord, don't let me have a questionable mind of our relationship. Lord, don't let me be bothered in my mind that I'm not well, I'm not doing all that you want me to do. Lord, don't give me a mind of questioning whether or not I will betray you, whether I will turn my back on you. Because the last time I said, our relationship, the Lord and mine was pretty good. And I don't know about you, it, it, it's, it's good right now. It, it's good. Tell somebody, my relationship with the Lord is pretty good. The one who saved us. The one who died for us. The one who shed his blood for us. The one that did something for me that mama and daddy could not do. So, so why would I put myself in a position of having to ask the Lord, is it I? What could have possibly crossed the mind of daddy? Some, some may call him Jude. Not Jude, but Jude. Jude, you, you know Jude. Jude, who in John, the 14th chapter, 22nd verse, requested that Jesus would present himself to the world and not just his disciples. Look, look at it, it's there. Look, look at John, 
go to chapter 22 verse, you'll find that he asked the question, will you just present yourself to the world? Can't you imagine this daddy is saying, why would I betray you when we're like family? Family is a good thing to have. God bless you today. Family, family is a good thing to have. And we all know that family don't betray family. This, this new era, this new era, that old era used to say, you know, this twist of blood is thicker than water. That's what we used to hear all the time. Blood is thicker than water. And this man, this man have or had to be in the back of his mind. And can I invite, can I exegesis this text? He must have had in the back of his mind that I never turn on family. Just a statement of such coming from Jesus. Who such a level of faith had been shared by them, and then to turn to the last hour of earthly fellowship and hear that there is an unfaithful follower amongst us. All the way up to the last hour, and then to hear that there's somebody amongst us that's not right. Isn't that a hard pill to swallow or what? To know that you've been as good as you can be to us and only to find out that your good is being dealt with by a betrayal. And can't you hear the undertone of the whispering? Can't you hear the undertone? Can't, can't you hear these disciples sitting among the table with Jesus sharing bread sharing wine, sitting amongst the fellowship of the brethren, only to hear Christ say that one of you will betray me. Can't you hear the whispering? Can't you hear the mumbling? Can't, can't you hear the doubt? Can't you hear the, the, the questioning within themselves of saying, Lord, Lord, is it I? Let's move on, let's move on. Let's move on because Thomas, Thomas, he was there must have been inclined to at least look deep into the inner conscience of where he stood with the law. Thomas was there. And you do remember Thomas. After all, Thomas' relationship with Christ was a mystery through his relationship with Peter and Andrew. He didn't have a, 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 an upfront relationship. His relationship was developed through friendship. And if anybody had an inquiring mind, it was a doubt of the crowd named Thomas. So he could have had a moment at the table. I said at the table, he, he could have had one of those moments and wondered at least, could it be me? Lord, is it I? Could, could it be me? I, I, I don't know you like they know you, but, but could it be me? I, I'm here with and I, and I followed you because I believe you, but, but could it be me? I, I don't know the exact seating arrangements around the table, but, but somewhere at that table also sat a Galilean named Matthew, alias Levi. You remember him, don't you? And his reputation, just like all of us, preceded himself. He, he could have had a certain twitch of his own character based on the fact that, that, that he was well to do prior to his discipleship. In other words, Matthew was a well to do person. He had the funds. He, he had the place to live. He had a good life. He, he was a tax collector. He had things in his own favor. But, 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 but I'm reminded, if I can help somebody here, I'm reminded that according to Luke 9 and 28, when the scripture says, Matthew did something that all of us have to do, when we come to follow Christ, he left everything and rose. Look at Luke 5 and 28. He left everything, rose, and followed Christ before coming to this band of brothers. Now I'm sure that if he had this on his mind, then this may have realized the thought of hearing of your departure, Lord. Maybe I can go back to what I used to be. So instead I sit here amongst the whispers and I'm hearing the words come out of their lips and I'm also within my own mind of inquisitiveness. I'm also in my own mind saying, Lord, is it that? Is it that? Nevertheless, there at the table was James the less, or to some James the son of our friends, who had crucial suspicion of being 
being a relative of Christ as well. He had his own thoughts that he, he, he was possibly related to Christ himself. Doesn't that sound good? That Christ did something that we ought to do today. Christ reached inwardly or inside his family as well as outside the family to take up your cross and follow him. And, and every now and then, you ought to do family inventory. Have I got a witness here? You, you ought to do some family inventory every now and then. You ought to just go through the family, pull out the old family reunion pictures and see who has and who has not a relationship with the Lord. Every now and then, you ought to do a family inventory. Make sure that family members are following out the ground. Make sure that some lost soul, that, that lost uncle, that, that lost aunt, that lost nephew, that lost son, lost son, or lost daughter, have a relationship with the Lord. Make, make sure that some lost soul or some unbeliever is being helped and coming to know who Christ really is. Have I got a witness here? And even still, here sits another little whispering murmur of Lord, is it I? I want to know today, Lord is it I, Lord is it I. And from one James to another, and the reason why James the less was considered James the less, because James, because James the less was the younger of the two James that fell within the category of disciples. Have we got women? But this James that I'm bringing up now is the James, the brother of John, and he too was a part of trying to see just where his true status with the Lord lies. And as far as he could see, it was pretty good. Because after the supper, James was with Jesus, Peter, and John when they entered into the garden of Gethsemane. Do I have a witness here? But even with that, even with that, even with that, this question was put there because of the unsure status of where you are with the Lord. And I tell anybody it's good to have a relationship with the Lord. It's a good thing to have a relationship with the Lord. I tell anybody, I don't care who you are. You can fall out with your friend. You can fall out with loved ones. But don't fall out with the Lord. Can I look in one more? Then there was Simon. And this Simon was according to Luke 6 and 15. He was called the Zealot. Which means that he had a zealous spirit and his drive, his push from his proud resume of being that of a zealot. Do I have a witness here? Or one that pushed for religious freedom. So if I can share with you on today, he was already inclined to handle and push back from other religions. And a lot of problem with the churches today is that we have too many religious battles, pushbacks, too much religious Petition. Too much our church is better than your church. Too much our preacher is better than your preacher. Too much our choir is better than your choir. Too much our musician pray better than your musician. Too much our worship is our band's your worship. Have a got a witness here? When all of us should be all about Christ and nobody else but Christ. And so, and so this theological spirit. That we witnesses here today, the zeal out of the spirit that Simon had. He was operating with Christ. And there's a word that we use in this term in this day to day. He was operating with Christ as an apologetic. A follower, yet he too sits and falls within a doubtful crowd of Lord. Is it out? Lastly, there was one according to verse number 23. The Bible says in verse 23, and he answered and said, he that dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Lastly, there was one, according to verse number 23, who dipped his hand in the dish. And from that dip, they revealed the eye of betrayal. From, from that one dip, the eye, and I know there's not an eye in betrayal, but the eye of the traitor was revealed by that one dip. And I did not say the eyes of the trail, but the eye of the trail. John 13 and 
And verse 1 and 27 says that after Judas had sought the bread, that Satan entered in to Judas. And Jesus instructed him to do what he has to do quickly. That he might be able to continue his march toward the cross. And so often we verbally beat down and brutally beat down the character of Judas and his role of Christ's crucifixion. But the truth of the matter is that the Lord must have had a pretty good opinion of Judas. Not only did he have a good opinion of Judas, but he trusted Judas to handle the business. Yes, the Bible would have us to know because it was Judas that the Lord would give the money to provide living status during the travels. And so he trusted Judas to live a spiritual life. And if you're not aware of it today, I want somebody to know that the Lord, he entrusted us to live a spiritual life. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a desire, nor do I have any thoughts or ideas to find myself in question or saying, Lord, is it I? Yes, is it I? that turned my back on you? Or is it I that walked contrary to your word? Is it I that took it upon myself when I could have helped someone? I turned and walked away. Is it I or me that refused to acknowledge, Lord, that you are the only God? Yes, that took it upon yourself to come down Have a gather with us here and walk amongst these mundane shores. And at the age of 30, you kept up with God's divine plan of beginning a campaign of salvation. Yes, and for three years, went about healing and delivering. And in that three years, the eye of all eyes, yes, appeared before us. That is the eye. Is the same one that came and died that we might live. Yes, the Bible would have us to know that he died on an old rugged cross. But the story did not end there because hanging on that cross was the eye of the eyes. And that was Jesus who was taken down from the cross, buried in a borrowed tomb. And then Have a God with us here. Are you in a position that you might find yourself saying, Lord, is it I? Yes, I don't want to be found saying, Lord, is it I? When he comes back to get me. And one of these old days, he's coming back. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Or will he give a roll call? Call out those that will depart from him. Will you be one of those? Will you be the one that he says, you did not feed the hungry, you did not clothe the naked. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. Will you be one of those that would have to say, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Or will you be one that will hear him say, well done, that good and that faithful servant. Come on up and let me make you rule over me. Will you be one? Lord, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? God bless you today. God keep you as our prayers. We pray that this will soon come to an end, that we all can come together again and fellowship as one, fellowship in a higher spirit, fellowship as God wants the church to come together. God allows things to happen that things may happen, that change may come. And we're looking for a great change.
when the church building is to open up again and we all come into fellowship. Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? If you're at home today and if we were in services normally, we would open the door of the church now. We would extend an invitation. And we want to extend that invitation to you today. We open the door of your sanctuary. Open the door of your sanctuary. That person that don't know Jesus, ask them, do they want to be caught in the spirit of saying, Lord, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Talk to someone today. Introduce them to Christ. Let them know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Allow them to know that if they confess their sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive them of all of their sins, First John 1 and 9, and cleanse them of all of their unrighteousness. Let them know that they can be saved. It doesn't matter what you've done. Repentance is made by man. Confession is made by man. And forgiveness is made by God. Let them know that if they confess their sins, God will forgive them. The scripture says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't be saved by yourself. Let's reach others. Let them know that Christ does live and that he lives in us. God bless you today. God keep you as our prayers. Immediately after this service, we will go into our communion services. And we're going to serve those that are at home, those that have been served. Please remember all of our sick and shut in. Remember our very own chairman of our deacon's ministry in your prayers. Remember our deacon's ministry as a whole, our deaconess ministry, our mothers, our leading lady of our church, and our ushers, our choir, our ministry of music. Remember the churches as a whole. God bless you again. God keep you. This is Pastor Michael C. Smith, Sr., First of all, the Missionary Baptist Church, Savannah, Georgia. God bless you. Again, we thank God for the word of God on today. We pray that it will be a blessing to you. Again, a happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, and certainly we thank God for you as well. If you have your church covenant, or if you have it in your presence, if you would join with me as I read through the church covenant. Uh, having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel to all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion to religiously educate our children, to seek salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to zealous in our efforts to advance to the kingdom of our Savior. We follow that engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, be power and glory forever. Amen. 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 If you have your elements, if you will get them now this time, if you are making do with uh, rye bread or bread and uh, fruit juices or whatever your selected choices of fruit juices would be, uh, if you would get those together this time now. Again, this is symbolical of Christ's body and blood that was shed for us. Uh, 
that we might uh, have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, the scripture would have us to know that as they were sitting at the table, Jesus uh, he himself, he took bread, uh, and the Bible says that he blessed it and break it and, and gave it to his disciples. Uh, he said, take it, this is my body. And then the Bible says that and he took the cup and gave thanks uh, to it and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you uh, in remission of sins. And then he says, he says, but I say unto you, I will not drink of this forth this fruit uh, until I drink of it new in my Father's kingdom. Now we're not able to uh, bless this bread or this wine in our own humanity, but we do ask the blessings over the bread and over the wine. Father God, in the name of Jesus, now we pray that you will bless this bread, bless this wine, that it may be used, Lord. Uh, in the purpose of which we are to receive it. And you said in your word that as often as we do this, we show forth your death until you come again. And certainly it is our glorious patience and wait for you to return that we may be able to go back with you when you come. And we ask our Lord, bless this bread, bless this wine uh, from a carnal state to a spiritual state, Lord, that it might be uh, pleasing unto thee as we receive it. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Yeah. 